Hey, it's Robin with Stamp with Dr. Robin. Sorry I had to restart there. Looked like I wasn't on Wi-Fi. So hopefully some of you stuck around or came back or whatever and that you are gonna come back and say hi. So this is Robin with Stamp with Dr. Robin. I am an independent Stamping Up demonstrator in San Diego, California, where it's pretty overcast. We're very inland here. And so usually by now it's hot and no haze or anything but still kind of hazy as you can tell it's still quite bright in here I don't even have a light on in the room um, but uh, it's trying to decide is it gonna start raining what's gonna happen here so um, it did rain a little this morning which is unusual I know a lot of you live in places where it does rain during the summer but it doesn't usually rain here in the summer so um, that's an unusual thing Okay, hoping that people are going to come on, but I'm just gonna start by talking about what's going on with Stampin' Up! and what's the, the news. So today is our last day of being able to order um, with bonus days, and bonus days are ordering, um, for every $50 order, you're getting one $5 coupon to spend next month. So um, today's our last day for doing that. Uh, the other thing that's gonna be new starting, today's the 31st, I get so confused. Yeah, today is the 31st. So starting tomorrow, there is something new happening. Of course, there's always something new happening. And starting tomorrow is going to be a um, sale on kits, including old paper pumpkin kits. They're saying up to 30% off. I don't know if it's all kits, some kits, all 30%, some you'll just have to check the website tomorrow. Um, and of course, those are always while well, supplies last, always with, with all of their kits. Um, the other thing is our um, class. If you're in San Diego, I've got a class using the Darling Detail set. Um, that I'm in love with and obviously because we're using it today, although a different way to use it. So, um, and my class is gonna be August 18th or 20th, or if you want to get it at home, just let me know and I can send you everything you need to do it at home. So, I've gotta find my little cheat sheet here and see if there's anything else I'm supposed to tell you. Um, we had wonderful, class recently using the trucking along stamp set and and punch which punch won't be back for a while but you know the stamp set's still there as are a whole bunch of other um, new uh, online exclusives if you haven't figured out online exclusives you go to the website you click on shop products and scroll scroll down it's not at the top scroll down and you'll see one that says online exclusives and click on it there are some surprises in there I'm always reminded when I go see is that some of the carryover items didn't are carrying over so you can still buy them but they're now in the online exclusive um, department they're not in the clearance rack or anywhere else there's some online ones um, I think that's the big thing um, if you want to know about the details cost wise of my darling details uh, class if you buy the bundle from me for $77 because that includes the shipping um, you got the class for free if you just buy the stamp set and get the four cards and how to make them and everything it's $50 class is $25 but with all three of these you also get a half a package of the bright and beautiful DSP and half a package of um, of some uh, embellishments. So hold on a second and I am going to turn you down here. So hopefully you can see this, what we're doing today. Oh, and if you want that sent to your house, it's, it's 10 bucks more. So let's pull this out just a little bit. I think we got cut off. There we go. That should work. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay, so again, like I said, we're using Darling Details, and I thought of this class when I was, 
or this card rather, when I was working on last week's um, card because I was I did use this on last week's card and I was thinking, boy, that sure looks like pine boughs. I wonder if I can make these into a wreath. And so I did. So basically, this is my first um, Christmas card for the year is using darling details. Now I have to tell you guys that the demonstrators have gotten a peek at the holiday, uh, oh shoot, shoot, we don't even call this now, September to December mini catalog, what we used to call the holiday catalog. And it has, um, you know, fall stuff, it has all occasion stuff, it has Christmas stuff, and um, even some New Year's sets. Um, you guys are going to love it, honestly. It is a fabulous catalog. And so that got me thinking about Christmassy kind of stuff. Demonstrators can order from that catalog um, August 2nd, and everybody else gets to wait till September to order. But it got me thinking along the time to, to think about Christmas cards. So I don't know if anybody recognizes this paper here. But this um, paper is from one of the ones from the Delightfully Eclectic um, DSP packages. That's the one that has four pieces of, I think it's 12 different um, designs. And this one, it's unusual colors as well as an unusual stamp set to use for holidays. Um, it had the pretty peacock with this little teeny bit of bubble bath already in it. And you'll notice I colored in more of the hearts to give even more bubble bath. And on the back of this page is a bunch of, of basically uh, typewriter keys. And the, the interesting thing about the Delightfully Eclectic is that it seems to work with a bunch of different stamp sets because remember we have a stamp set that has the typewriter. So I've seen people cut out these different letters and search all through to find maybe H, A, P, gotta find another P and a Y and actually spell out that or spell out somebody's name using this back. But we're gonna use this one today. So. Let's get to it. So this is a half sheet of bubble bath cardstock. So it is eight and a half by five and a half. It's scored at four and a quarter. And hopefully everybody remembers how to fold where your mountain becomes the valley is the way that I was always taught and could keep it straight. This next piece of the delightfully eclectic is uh, four by five and a quarter. Uh, remember, whoops, no, maybe it's not. It's four, but it's not five and a quarter, so hold on a second. And let's just cut it down a bit. Oh, this is going to make everything all sticky, but that's okay. We will figure that out later. Ah. Can all be fixed, right? It's just. Anyway, what I was saying is we are going to cover up a lot of this, and that's why I decided before to color in some of these, but we're going to wait to do that until we're done with our, with our stamping. So this square, basic white square, is 3 and 7 eighths square. And this is where we also need our, piercing, our messy piercing mat. And we're going to take, remember I said, we're going to take this um, one that kind of looks like a pine bough and our pretty peacock to match that paper. And what I did is just start at the top and just stamp it around. Oops. Just kind of overlapping a little bit. And trying to make something that's not really a circle into a circle. There we 
There we go. That worked. And then we are going to scrub this off with our little scrubber. And then what I usually do when I'm going to be chain, you know, using it right away after scrubbing it is first stamp it like that and then actually stamp even one more of these so that it um, doesn't make a big mess. But also, I'm actually going to use this. This is Granny Apple Green and I'm going to use it stamped off. Now I went around, just so you can see it a little better. When I went around this um, thing the first time, I went in this direction. I'm gonna turn it and go at the other direction. And oh, I can't remember what I did. I'm going to stamp it off just lightly. But the reason I went the other direction is so that you could see a little bit more on both sides. Does that make sense? And if it doesn't seem like it's, you know, stamping enough so that you're seeing different parts of this, then you just kind of move it around. And, you know, I'm just very lightly stamping it off. I'm not trying to get all of the um, ink off of here, but I'll show you why on the other side that I stamped it off. I just thought that was too heavy. I wanted it a little bit lighter than that. Okay, let's also get something for the inside. And stamp that one full strength. And I think I'm gonna wash it off one more time and do just a stamp of the pretty peacock also for the inside. Hey guys, hi Becky. Hi, Linda. Hi, Leanne. Hi, Leatrice. Is anybody watching for the first time? There we go. So that's for our, our inside piece. Now, the other only other thing we need to stamp is the word joy. And that is actually from the... the I use this kind of what I call the short, fat, stylish shape um, banner. And then that is from the, the Joy here is from the Brightest Glow stamp set. Um, that was uh, part of last year's holiday class or uh, catalog and it carried over. Yeah, if you don't have it, you want it. That's Brightest Glow. It just has so, oh, that didn't even get completely inked, so many great sentiments to use on your holiday cards. Beautiful. You guys want me to bring it back and show it again in case everybody doesn't have this stamp set? I mean, to me, this is one of those must have. It's got a beautiful Merry Christmas. It's got things that go really nicely on the inside of cards as well as the outside, a season's greetings. Um, it's, it's really a nice set. Okay, so I think we can put this together. So let's put this little piece on the inside. I'm not sure what else, you know, I might put another sentiment um, in here, but I'm not sure yet, so we'll just leave that blank. Really, I'm wondering too, if you could use this for other than a holiday card, what do you guys think about using a um, wreath for something other than a holiday card? I know some people say to them wreaths are total holiday things, but I don't know, to me wreaths are just pretty. 
So I'm going to take my light bubble bath, you could use either light or dark, and I'm going to color in a few more of these hearts just because I want to. And I think that it does look better having a few more of these just to, um, you know, tie in the colors that we're using. Otherwise it was just like two of them was all you were really seeing up here. I'm not going to color them all in. But just a few more so we get a little bit more of that pink kind of feel. And then we're going to take this Joy and get a couple dimensionals on the back. going to put it up a little high here because we do have some other stuff going around which is this bow so let's make a bow so this is actually a double bow I have used both the um, glittered organs or organdy ribbon if you don't have this the lovely thing about having this kind of ribbon is that it um, this white ribbon you can color it any color and I thought about coloring it with the um, with the blend to this pink and then I remembered I had this and this pink come from this sheer ribbon package um, it actually took me a while to see this and order it but it is beautiful it does not look as pretty in the catalog this is from the annual catalog as it does in person because you got the azure afternoon the lemon lolly and the the um, bubble bath did i say bubble gum bubble bath um and all you know new new colors um but it has this i'm hoping you can see it it has this silver edging on both of them all right so what i'm doing when i do a double bow is i take the two pieces and line them up down line them up like that let's get a little more of both of them out. and then I make one bow here I make bunny ears I don't know how else to do it especially when you have all of these layers that you're doing so make two bunny ears cross one over the other bring it through the hole and pull. I don't know if you can see it, I don't know if it's in the thing, but I have these still right on the, the spools. And then that way, once I'm done, I will just cut them off. Now see, every time when you make a ribbon, see how one side has the pink on the top and one side has the organza on the top, but you can just take it and all I did was twist it behind the knot and the knot will, will hold that. So now I have the bubble bath, both of them on the top. Okay. And then you just play with it a little bit. I know a lot of people are bow challenged, but to me, a wreath deserves a bow. No matter if it's a holiday wreath or some other kind of wreath, it deserves about just tightening that up. That seems like it got a little loose there. And that's how I do my bows. And then I usually just use a glue dot to, um, whoops, to glue them on with. Okay, little Mr. Glue Dot, you're not gonna be helpful, huh? They don't, want to, they don't want to stick today. Oh, one thing I forgot to tell you, I didn't really screw up on any of these, but oftentimes, well, that one's like a little light. So uh, I'll just say, okay, see how that one doesn't kind of look like the others? Let's just put the bow there. So that's the nice thing about having a bow is you just can kind of rearrange it if you have got one spot, because honestly, that's how the bow ended up here on the other one. 
you can just cover up those little mistakes and then it kind of separates. You can see that we've got two bows going on here. And you could always also just put another glue dot underneath to hold that out. I might actually do that. Just another place where, that's not the one I wanted. I love using this little pointy take your pick tool. Do any of you have the, the second, the parts that came out this time around where they have different um, tops for these? So what I'm doing is I'm just putting it underneath that organza ribbon so that it stays out from underneath the bubble bath. So you can, I mean, why put on two different colors if you're not going to see one, right? So I'm just grabbing it, sticking it on the back, and then gluing it down a little bit. So I got one high, one low. You can do it however you want. But at least you can see it. Oops. And then, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take these adhesive, what is it called, pastel adhesive back sequins. You can tell I've used a lot of them. They come in two sizes right now in three different colors, the gold, the pink, and whatever blue that's supposed to be, probably Azure Afternoon. And I'm just using these big ones, and I'm putting one wherever the middle of these, um, uh, what do you call this, P pretty peacock boughs are because I figured that would space it out well. And as it turned out, there were five of them that you could see. You always kind of want to do an odd number when you're doing that. So, I oh, I know, there was one more thing I wanted to do is I wanted to take some, you get a lot of this paper, you guys. So I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to put it on the back of one of our envelopes. And when I do that, I like to put the glue on the envelope because we're gonna end up cutting off some of this. And then what I, instead of putting glue on the paper like we usually do, so what I do is I just butt it up against the edge this is a two and a half by, I think it's, a, it's like a little bit over five and three quarters. So I would just do two and a half by six and then open it up. And then you're just gonna trim, trim it away. And if you trim a little of the envelope, nobody knows. So now we have a matching envelope. <laughs> I'm bow making challenge, Linda. When Linda, Linda likes to come to class here, and usually she says, Robin, can you tie my bows? And I always do. I think bow tying is just about practice. So now that you've seen that this needs more hearts of course all you see on here is hey that's too much white let's put some hearts in there right more pink more pink all right that's probably enough just kind of random random pink hearts everywhere so what do you guys think? You like it? See now, notice how the bows are on two different places here. Just depends on where you need a bow. So, ah, uh, I really like this. I like, I like uh, holiday cards to be not all of, you know, not all my Christmas cards are red and green. I like to throw a little surprise in there. I know not everybody does. I know a lot of people are their traditional, you know, I've got to have my various reds and greens. 
I'm talking to you, Carol, if you're on. But a lot of us like to just mix it up a little. And you can call it pretty peacock a green. At least I do. Um, or you can call it a blue, whichever works. But definitely don't usually make, you know, pink and green together. But I think this works really well. And it's something that we can work on while we're waiting for our, our holiday catalog. <laughs> to start making some holiday cards. So I'm going to put you up between that and, you know, working also with the um, trucking along bundle. And hey, if you don't have the um, punch, don't worry about it. You could really easily cut those, um, those trucks out without it or just, you know, stamp on something. Stamp on a circle and stick it on something. It's really, really a cute stamp set great for guy cards, etc. So that's my plug and hope to see you guys all next week, next Monday. Not sure what we're going to do, but we are going to do something fun. So take care of everybody. Bye.